Hey folks, how's it going? Today I'm going to be unboxing a longer resin printer. I've wanted one of these for quite some time, but just the price point was always too high for me. And this one is for 179 bucks. I'll post it somewhere on the screen so you guys see what I'm talking about. And we're going to see how it goes. So I'm going to be unboxing this, setting it up, doing a print, and I'll give you guys my feelings on the printer. So let's jump right into the unboxing. Alright folks, once you start unboxing, you're going to receive a filter, a new piece of film for your tank, the instruction manual. Slide of the box, you're going to receive five pieces of plexiglass for the UV protection case, a scraper, power adapter, and your UV curing resin. You'll also receive a Ziploc bag with about five items in it and your printer bag. From there, you can remove the, a plastic seal from your printer itself. See, it's not that big. It's pretty small, kind of like how compact it is. Jump into the Ziploc bag. You're gonna receive some playing cards, adhesive gloves, and a flash drive with your software, and some bands and some pre-render files. Honestly, the toughest part of this entire printer was putting this bed together. I had to stop and get some painters tape to hold it together as I went along one quarter at a time, taped it as I went along, and I removed the tape in the end. So I went with the left and right piece. I guess it can all be left and right, depending on where you turn it, but, and then the top piece, and I left another a side panel for the, for the end to slip it together. After I got it all together, I kept it taped, and then I pulled the bands over it. They, it comes with um, three bands. It suggests you use two. I used all three. I put one on the top, one in the middle, one at the bottom. Now at this point, you have to actually loosen your print bed so you can shift it around easily. You place it back on the printer and use a normal piece of paper to get a level. You should have a, a, a tough time kind of tugging it out. I should say too tough, but it should, it should have a little give when removing it. It should have like, it's almost like it's trying to grip it. Once you have that adjusted, you tighten it back, you can go in and plug in your printer and power it on. Now you just go through the menu and you can adjust the bed. You can do it in one millimeter increment or 10 millimeter increments. You raise it up high enough just to fit your bed inside of it. Place it on and screw it down with the two bolts that come with it. raise the tank high enough where you can actually put the UV resin inside of it where you can comfortably pour it. Let's stop here and make our way down to the computer to install the software and load our files onto the flash drive. We're going to go through and we're going to install the software. So all you do is install your flash drive and open it up from your computer. And then from there, you go into the software and then the application file is right here. So just double click on that and we're going to go ahead and install it directly from the flash drive. All right, let's load it up. So this is the software. This is the representation of the longer orange tin. And it actually comes with some files here and STL files. So first thing I want to do is test out the STL files. There we go. What's on? Oh, that loaded really fast. Oh, but there are no menu settings up here to slice the file. Maybe I can't, maybe you can't drag and drop. Let's see if it's something as simple as that. Maybe I have to actually load a model from the flash drive or from somewhere and see if that'll give me, and that's why. So, unlike Cura, you can't drag and drop a model. You literally have to import it in using this and that will give you your settings. So you can select it, rotate it, do all that stuff. All right, so let's go upstairs and get this top printed. And I can go through your files and pick a, a test file. Make sure you shake up your um, UV resin really, really well before you pour it. I did this before. You see the bubbles. And when it's ready to print, you can just hit the check mark. Now, as you will see soon, the first print did fail. I went with the Stormtrooper for the first print. I actually tried to go with a file that I rendered really small and it failed and I haven't had a chance to dig into why it wouldn't even print at all. The Stormtrooper failed about an hour into the print. 
So I went back through and I went with the zombie hunter print file since that had, I thought it might have something to do with the supports and the zombie printer had had no supports and I went with that one instead. All right, folks, so the print is done. I turned the printer off because it is so loud. I'm gonna pull this up. Let's take a look at the results to get these gloves on. All right. Look at that. Looks pretty good, and this isn't, this isn't even the highest setting. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna go and get this removed, and they said use 91% isopropyl. All I have is 99%, so that should work just fine. So that's what I'm gonna be using. Whoa. Get this cleaned off. I really gotta, with how messy this is or how messy I'm being, I really need to set up a little separate cleaning section for this. And definitely have a lot more gloves on hand. So because I forgot to get a UV light, I'm actually using my wife's thing and arrow light. So it takes, it takes about 15 minutes to cure this. And I've had it under here for about 10 minutes now and it shuts off like every two minutes so i've been literally just pushing the button over and over again and i've already flipped sides so we'll see how it goes in the next few minutes or so all right folks so here they are first print which was a failure this is my the stormtrooper and second pr print which is the zombie hunter so first impressions on this printer I feel like it was a really, it was really easy start. The most frustrating part for the entire thing really was putting together the, the actual framing that goes over the printer to protect it from light. Uh, just the way it came, I had to use tape, if you, as you guys saw, to put it together just to get it to stay in place. Other than that, the assembly was easy. It was just, it wasn't. There was nothing hard about it. Just annoying parts about it, which was like a similar case. Which I, I understand why they did it that way to make shipping better. It comes with four files you can print. And the Stormtrooper was one of those files. And usually whatever files come with the printer are the ones that are dialed down for like using the best results on whatever the printer is. So you know what, what you, essentially what how things are gonna turn out for you. Any default file I've ever printed out on a printer when I first got it, I think has always just printed just fine, like easily. This first time I had one fell on me. And I still don't know what made the Stormtrooper fail. I really don't. And what made the zombie succeed, the zombie hunter succeed, I don't know. All I can think of is maybe because the Stormtrooper has supports and this one didn't need support. That's all I can think of. Maybe there's some failure somewhere in the supports. And I'll dig into that later. We're going to be making more videos on this printer, testing it out a lot more and pushing it to the limits. Honestly, I like the printer for something that's under 200 bucks. The color that it comes with is kind of skin tone. I've seen some much better colors with the grays and blues. I definitely want to check some of the other colors out. The print time isn't that bad. Like this took three hours. Cleaning it with the 99% isopropyl was not that bad of a process. All I really did was kind of rinse it around. Next time I'll probably have myself like a toothbrush and a spray bottle to make it a little easier instead of a cleaning station. I'd say the biggest takeaways with this is, I guess the assembly's easy. Don't start your first print with a stormtrooper or something with supports. Start your first print with a zombie killer. I will also set up a cleaning station right away. Don't wait until the print's done like I did and start cleaning. Have a cleaning station ready. Have a place for you to dip your print inside of with your isopropyl alcohol. Have yourself a spray bottle, towels um, handy, and um, gloves, and have your UV light handy. Because it's nighttime now, so I couldn't take it in the sun. So to use my wife's fingernail UV light, which is kind of annoying, and it turns off automatically after like two minutes. So yeah. I think it's a really great printer for under $200. And the detail is great. Let me get this a little closer so you guys can actually see all the detail in his face. So if you guys can see all the... Oh, man, I dropped that. If you guys look close, you can see all the detail. And his beard. 
wrinkles on the back of his neck. Let's see if I can hold that a little better. Hopefully the camera's giving the detail justice. The fact that there's no cleanup is really one of the big selling points. Now don't get me wrong, when I do some press with supports, there's gonna be what they call like support pimples, like little dimples left on it you can like clip off and sand down. But other than that, like this one didn't have any supports and it is really clean. The detail is fantastic. I'm super excited to print a lot more stuff on this, guys, like miniatures and stuff like that. So yeah, all around I think it's a great printer. I know you guys know I do a lot of model price stuff in here. You might be curious why I didn't get the model price on printer because the reviews were so bad on Amazon. It was like two and a half, three stars, I believe it was. That concerned me a lot. I went with something that was inexpensive and had fairly decent reviews, fairly consistent reviews. I believe this one has like four stars out of five. Yeah, so that's the main reason I went with this over the model price if you guys are curious. But that's all for this video, guys. Thank you for checking this out. Please stay like, share, and subscribe, and comment below, guys. And I'm gonna have a lot more videos coming from this printer, and I would like to do some giveaways with the prints that come from this printer, some of the projects gonna be doing. So make sure you guys look out for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Later.